Ever see a woman so fine, so dandy, so sexy, you said you'd do anything to get with her? Maybe buy her things, take her on trips, invite her to your mother's? Well, what about murder? Would you do that? No one would, right? Well, Billy Wilder, Raymond Chandler, and James M. Kane found somebody. An insurance salesman. His story is told in double indemnity. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch. To the detectives with all the answers. To the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls. And the trusted ones too pure for this world. And all you double crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby faced amateurs. This one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Cine Shadow Moonlights, Noir Vimper. The opening credit titles show us a man on crutches, completely bathed in shadow, approaching the camera. Then, a car moving quickly down city streets, taking corners rapidly and stopping short to park. We see a man get out. He clearly looks like he's been on a bender all night. He hasn't. He's been shot. It's Walter Neff, and he's about to make his confession. You thought it was wrapped up in tissue paper with a pink bow around it. Well, we find out that it wasn't. So the basic plot rundown goes like this. A sexually weak man and a fed up housewife looking for a fall guy to use get together to plan a murder. Big insurance settlement. They're hitting it for the limit, baby. Straight down the line. Things seem alright, then they go south. And in a world like this one, who can you trust? They got professionals whose life goal it is to figure this stuff out. And when the jig is up, no matter your lust for the other, someone's got to go down. Neff starts hitting on her, and she tells him to back off, and they start this great dialogue about speed limit. She says, there's a speed limit in this state, Mr. Neff, 45 miles per hour. How fast was I going, officer? I'd say around 90. Suppose you get off your motorcycle and give me a ticket. Suppose I let you off with a warning. Suppose it doesn't take. Suppose I whack you over the knuckles. This kind of supposing dialogue is awesome. And the whole time Neff knows he's probably going to be played for the soccer. That he's getting into something that he shouldn't. He even says at one point, I knew I had a hold of a hot red poker, and the time to drop it was before it burned my hand off. And Phyllis notices his interest and starts to rope him in. Starts playing the worried housewife. Scared that her husband will get hurt in the oil field. That he's superstitious. He doesn't want to sign it because once he does, he's surely dead. The sexuality is way too strong between the two of them, but they get greedy in the process. There's a double indemnity clause in the policy to where if a man dies on a train, then it's double, a hundred grand. But the husband gets hurt. He's now on crutches. This further complicates their plans. So when the time is right, they decide to do him in. Walter snaps the neck of the husband in the car ride to the train, while Phyllis looks on gleefully. Walter gets in full crutch costume and plays husband to jump off the train right at the right moment. But a man spots him and talks to him. This further complicates things. Another loose end. But Walter jumps off and all seems right in the world. Walter does his best to tie up any loose ends. That night he leaves his car in. He calls about some other policies. He puts a card in the telephone box so if it rings, the card will fall. Same with the doorbell. And he even walks to Phyllis's house. And I can't forget to mention Mr. Keys, played by Edward G. Robinson. You know, little Caesar, she, Rico, ya she. You know the guy. He's an insurance salesman through and through. He can figure anything out. He was born to do it. He has a little man inside him that tells him. He's kind of like a father figure to Walter Neff, and he respects him. Some people like to say there's gay context there, but 
But that's what everybody always says from the movies of the 30s and 40s. Gay context. If you have any kind of relationship with a man out of respect or whatnot, it's got to be gay. They must be gay. And the ending's great. Once Walter figures out that everything is probably lost, he goes and visits Phyllis one last time. There's a great shot with her sitting there in the dark just smoking a cigarette, which is always really kind of creepy. She admits everything she's done. She says, I'm rotten to the heart. I used you, just as you said. And Walter used her a little bit too. He wanted to see what was between those legs. Keyes catches him after he's done giving his confession. Keyes gives him no favors. He's a hard liner. He has been betrayed. Walter tries to leave but barely makes the door in desperation. He is cooked. Laying there bleeding with Keyes calling for an ambulance and the police, he is defeated. He smokes a bloody cigarette. The cinematography for Double Indemnity was done by John Seitz. There's a shot when we first see the Dietrichson house. The sun is coming in through the blinds and it's illuminating the room in shadow and dust. Very noir. There's another shot when Walter finally figures out that he is indeed going to kill Mr. Dietrichson. He's standing in the open window, smoking, with the rain pouring down. The shots in the grocery store when Walter and Phyllis meet up seem very unreal. It almost looks like a sitcom from the 90s. Fred McMurray plays a great Walter Neff. Breaking out from his normal comedic role, he's very believable in this. Also, Barbara Stanwyck is sensual and sexual as ever. And that wig she wears, <laughs> it's awesome. They also show people smoking in a market. Yeah, try that. Go to High V and start smoking a cigarette. See what happens. What's not to like? 